Hello, Tech Pros, episode 100. Welcome to the podcast where I chat with professionals who are getting the job done using technology seven days a week. Each week, we start with Motivation Monday. Tuesday is about productivity. Wednesday, leadership. Thursday, technology. Friday, people and communication. Saturday, entrepreneurship. And Sunday, being unplugged. All right, let's get started. Hello, Tech Pros. This is Chad Bostic, and I am so, so excited to be here talking to you today. Uh, This is a very special episode, a productivity episode of Hello, Tech Pros. And as I said in the intro, this is episode number 100. I am super, super pumped to be here at episode 100. Honestly, there were many, many times, uh, especially at the beginning of this journey, where I thought, Dude, if I could get 100 podcast episodes, if I could record 100 podcast episodes, I will have done something. Well, I did something. Uh, It's a really, really big deal to me, Um, not just because, um, well, well, the significance is really due to to all the people that have helped me along the way in this journey, and also the things that I've learned about myself and about uh, business and about life and about entrepreneurship. Uh, things that I'm I'm super super excited about. So I thought I would what I would do on this episode, this uh, productivity episode of Hello Tech Pros, is tell you about the story of how I started and how I got to 100 episodes. And I want to challenge you: if you are thinking about creating a podcast, you can do it. Like if I can do it, you can absolutely do it. And uh, if you've got the time, (laughs) which is the hard part, but if you can set aside the time, you can absolutely get to 100 episodes of your own by the end of this year. You know what? I would challenge you even before that. I would say by Thanksgiving, by the end of November of this year, November of 2016, uh, if you're listening to this episode in July, you can absolutely get to 100 episodes of your own podcast or blog or vlog or whatever else you want to publish. You can do it. You can do this. It is possible. If I can do it, anybody can do it. So let me break it down. Let me let me tell you my story of, of how I did it, how I get to, got to where I am today. And, uh, you know, fill in any gaps because I get a lot of questions all the time from from uh, from listeners and from guests and from family and friends saying, how did you do this? Like, last time I looked, you had like three or four episodes, and now you're up to 80-something, 90-something, 100-something. That's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So to go back on the story, we'll start on February 9th, 2016. That was the day that I bought the domain name of Hello Tech Pros. So uh, actually, let me back up before that way a a couple of years ago, two or three years ago. um, I've been a big fan of of Pat Flynn and John Lee Dumas and uh, Shane and Jocelyn Sams and some other entrepreneurs that that, uh, publish podcasts um, about business and about online business specifically. And uh, also fan of like the Critical Hit podcast if if you're a Dungeons and Dragons nerd like I am. I've uh, been listening to these shows for several years and uh, have always kind of wanted to take a stab at it, but never felt comfortable on a mic, never felt comfortable listening to myself talk. Um, so instead, I tried blogging. And what I discovered with blogging is, uh, you know, sometimes I like writing, like creative writing, like telling stories and stuff like that. Um, but I have a really, really bad habit of editing at the same time that I'm writing. So as I'm writing, I'm constantly adjusting the words, um, rephrasing sentences, um, backspacing, deleting whole paragraphs. And at the end of uh, one or two hours of sitting there blogging, I've literally not got anything done because I've just been editing, editing, editing instead of writing, writing, writing. So I thought, you know what, if I could get to the, um, in a podcast, if I could, if I could just talk into a microphone, um, and if I could just share my thoughts out loud, like I'm doing right now, then I wouldn't be editing, right? I wouldn't be hacking and slashing and deleting. It would just be flowing naturally. Um, obviously, you know, I, I would not, I'm not a public speaker. I don't have a, a you know, I'm not an entertainer. I, I'm not used to being up on stage. I'm not used to having a microphone in front of me. So I said, you know what, I'm going to test this. I'm, I want to test this idea of being a podcaster 
So as I had a nine to five job and uh, I was actually uh, a, a manager inside an energy company, a big fortune 100 company, um, manager of a software development team, uh, very, very busy, had a lot of great work going on, a lot of good people that I work with. And I thought, you know what? If I just talk about the things that we're doing in our jobs today, not the specific, not the very, very specific things of, of, of people and, and you know, certain vendors and the certain projects, but just abstract it. Okay, we're talking about software development lifecycle. We're talking about change management. We're talking about, um, you know, uh, performance reviews. If, if I could do that, if I could have those discussions, I could just record them into a mic and then I get a few of them, you know, to where, okay, yeah, I've done this. Then I could publish them. I could turn it into a podcast. Well, I tried that. I walked out to the parking garage and locked myself in my car for about a week and a half to two weeks. And every day I would practice. I'd plug in my ear earbuds on my iPhone, turn on the little Apple uh, audio recording software on my phone, and I would just start rambling. And it was brutal. Oh my God. It was so, so horrible. I had the goal of what I wanted to talk about, but I really felt like I needed a crutch. I needed slides. I needed a PowerPoint presentation. I needed to turn it into a presentation. I couldn't just talk like I'm talking to you now. I couldn't just have a conversation to nobody. And so after several, several times of practicing this or just going out to the car, plugging in my earbuds, hitting record and going, uh... What do I want to talk about? Um, Java. Java is, uh, you know, <laughs> that was horrible. Horrible, horrible experience. And it really stemmed from a lack of self-confidence, to be honest with you. It all came down to a lack of self-confidence because I was very confident in my job. I'd been doing my job. I'd been working at this business, um, you know, for the last couple of decades or in this industry for the last couple of dec decades and at this job for the last, you know, 10 to 12, 13 years, I was very confident in the job that I did, but very self-conscious about hearing myself talk and trying to do something new outside of what I was comfortable with. So I erased all those files and I didn't do anything with it. Now, fast forward a year and a half later, a year and a half later, I had lost that job uh, that, that manager position at that fortune 100, because, uh, the oil and gas business had a big tank and, uh, I kind of rode the first wave of layoffs and, uh, it, it, it was fine. It was cool. I hold, I hold no judgment is actually, I feel very, very, uh, lucky to be one of the first people out, um, because it allowed me to pursue some things and adjust to things instead of being crushed by a falling market, by a bubble getting busted and, and being stuck in a position where, man, there's a lot of people that got, got, went through multiple, multiple rounds of layoffs. And, uh, and I've been through that and survived through that in the past, but, uh, I'm, I'm really glad that I got out when I did. So I left that job. I moved across the country. My family and I moved across the country. We tried something new. I got on with a video game company, which lasted five weeks before that company had financial problems and shut down the entire office. No problem. We got picked up. The entire office got picked up, got picked up by a sports entertainment company, and that was fun. Um, but it unfortunately it only lasted about eight or nine months, uh, and, and that position fell apart too. That 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 whole office fell apart. So what to do as I, I'm getting really, really good at kind of figuring out when, when layoffs are going to happen. Um, three times in 12 months, I got laid off due to, you know, financial pressures, uh, regulatory pressures, things that had nothing to do with my job performance, my role, uh, or my team's contributions to the company. It was just, you know, the companies or the industry were going through hard times. So I've gotten really, really good at smelling that out and, and figuring out when it's going to happen. So this last time it happened, um, I, th I, was, I was doing some thinking and thought, I want to start this podcast and I don't know what it's going to be about, but I know, I realize now after going through, you know, uh, different organizations over the last 12 months and reflecting on my career and the past and the things that I want to do and the things that I'm proud of and the things that have really, really inspired me and driven me over the last 10, 12, 15, 20 years of my career. 
has always been the funnest part of all of those jobs has been the one-on-one -on -one conversations that I have with with professionals about about their jobs and about getting stuff done. Like, dude, how are you so productive? You've literally gotten more done in in one day than the entire team has gotten done in the week. How do you do it? Or holy cow, your team, uh, you know, the I don't know what your leadership style is or what you call it, but your team will literally take a bullet for you. How are you doing that? What are you what are you saying to them? Um, or you're just totally geeking out on technology with people way, way smarter than me. Um, listening to to business leaders who have started their own business and who have talked about the grind and the you know the climb and the struggles they've had from from launching their startup to building it into a, a successful viable business have always been very inspiring to me and all of these one-on-one -on -one conversations or group conversations that I've been a part of have absolutely been the funnest part of my job and I said aha that's it I want to take that my favorite part of all of my jobs and roll it up and turn it into the next phase of my career. Okay, so it's not going to be me just rambling into a microphone. It's going to be me and somebody else. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and I'm going to find guests to be on the show, kind of like other podcasters and have an interview process. But I don't want it to be like an interview, like just ask them a series of here's the here's the eight questions that I always ask. I want it to be very conversational. But what's the conversation going to be about? Okay, so I did some brainstorming and I came up with a seven day a week format. And I was just on the verge of, of as, it was actually um, February 7th or 8th that I was thinking about what could this format be. And then uh, on, on February 9th was the day I thought, okay, I, I'm, if I sit here and think about this, overthink this through, um, the, the opportunity is going to pass me by because I have a tendency to overanalyze and overthink opportunities and situations and not act on them and not take massive amounts of action that need to be taken. So I said, okay, I need to come up with a name. I need to come up with a brand. I don't want to spend a lot of time thinking about it. Um, and I don't want to pay a bunch of money to brand experts to come up with it. It's just what, what is it? Okay. I'm talking to technical professionals about technology, about business. I'm talking to them about, I don't know what I'm going to talk to them about, but like, how, what am I going to say? Like, how am I going to introduce it? I'm just going to say, hello, tech pro, hello, tech pros, hello, tech pros.com. It's available. I bought it. And that was it. That was literally the, <laughs> the extent of how I thought about the brand and how I put the brand hello, tech pros together. Okay. I'm going to talk to professionals that work in technology. I'm going to my audience is going to be professionals that work in technology and every episode I will launch it by saying hello tech pros well hello tech pros episode 100 now but hello tech pros how's it going this is this is what we're talking about so that was February 9th 2016 I bought the domain hello tech pros the next day come to find out the next day on February 10th um, that was that third layoff that uh, that I experienced, and and unfortunately the whole team there uh, where I was working, everyone uh, was affected, or or nearly everyone was affected. And so um, the steps that I took to uh, immediately after that, immediately we were all told in a group setting, hey, the the you know this office will be closing down, and all the engineers, all the designers, all the product developers, all the um, all the managers, all the product managers, you know, everybody but a few customer support folks, they will be, today will be your last day here in the office. Uh, there will be a transition period and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But today will be the last day in the office and we're going to go through the process of start, you know, gathering up everybody's assets and signing the HR paperwork and all that kind of stuff. And so I just started socializing right then. Everybody's, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And I said, okay, well, this is what I'm going to do. I don't know how long it's going to last, maybe two weeks, maybe a month, maybe six months, maybe two years, maybe forever, but I'm going to start a podcast and this is what I want to do. And uh, I would love for you guys to tune in and I'd, I'd love for you guys to uh, be part of it and be guests on the show. <laughs> and the looks, the faces uh, that reflected back at me were like, hmm, Okay why what wait don't aren't you gonna find a job like what are you gonna do you so you're gonna do this podcast as like a hobby right i'm like no i'm i'm doing this full time 
I'm I'm turning this into a business. I'm going to get some sponsors, going to get some sponsorship money. I'm going to be promoting my own consulting business. I'm going to be promoting my own, um, you know, uh, startups and, and, and software, software as a service and, and technology and stuff that I've been working on on the side and that I will continue to work on. And I will be helping to uh, promote other people's businesses, other people's um, products that they're doing. I will be helping, you know, er, uh, the folks who are interested build a brand, a personal brand whether it is through a blog or their own podcast or, or whatever products or services they're providing. And uh, this is what I'm going to do. And, and I don't know how it's going to work, but I'm going to start with an MVP. So in software development, we say MVP, and we mean that as a minimum viable product. But I'm going to start with a minimum viable podcast. Uh, and then completely blew that MVP out of the water because I decided on, you know, obviously the seven-day-a-week show. And uh, my my first milestone was I wanted to get 30 episodes recorded, pre-recorded before I published any of them, so that when I, as soon as I started publishing, you know, gosh, if I'm publishing one episode a day, what if on a Thursday I'm trying to record uh, the episode for tomorrow and my guest, you know, gets in a car wreck or or has another Im- important uh, meeting that they can't get out of and, and they drop it. I'm going to have to have these episodes pre-recorded before I publish. So, okay, I want at least a month's worth of content. And so I set a, a small milestone for myself or large milestone for myself of 30 episodes to record. And I went through um, that process. That was my pre-production or pre-launch phase was the period from when I when I bought the domain to when I launched uh, the podcast on April 4th. So... <laughs> A lot has happened since then. So as soon as I started, well, well, here's the next step. So after I socialized it and I got a lot of huh and weird looks and strange faces and, and, and some, you know, questions from people um, about what I was going to do. The next thing I did was I went to my LinkedIn profile and I changed my job title from uh, engineering manager to podcast host at hellotechpros.com. So what happened as soon as I did that was, uh, you know, LinkedIn takes like major life events, uh, you know, major career events, and they promote them across the network. And so at that time in February of this year, I probably had somewhere around 1,000 to 1,200 connections on LinkedIn. And um, my my profile title change as a big deal from, from engineer at the company I was at to podcast host on hellotechpros.com, they, LinkedIn started sending that out to everybody um, or to a lot of my contacts, a lot of those 1,000 to 1,200 people. And when it, when it sent out, there were a number of people, dozens and dozens of people who uh, interacted with that notification. So if you use the mobile application, the mobile LinkedIn application, uh, you've probably seen this where you get uh, a status update from one of your colleagues or or one of your connections. And it says, hey, Chad Bostic has a new job. Congratulate him. And you can click the like button or you can click the, uh, I think it's the congrats button or something like that. If you hit the congrats button, it sends a, a personal, uh, like a text message or, or instant message from that person's account to your account or from your account to that other person's account. So I use that as an opportunity to generate, um, the, that was a lead generation service that I used to, to find guests for the first 30 days of the, of the podcast. So as people, you know, George said, congrats, Chad, wish you well on your next job. And Sally said, congrats, Chad, wish you well on, they weren't typing this in, they were just clicking the button and LinkedIn was automatically just pre-populating that text field and sending that to me. And what I did was reply back to each and every person as an individual uh, text message or reply back to that LinkedIn message that said, thank you so much. I appreciate your support. I would love to have you as a guest on the show. Here are some of the topics that I'm going to be talking about. Motivation, productivity, leadership, uh, technology, uh, people in communication, entrepreneurship, and uh, work-life balance is what I call it at the time. Uh, Which of these are you most interested in? So I did that to, I don't know, 100 people, 150, 200 people. I don't know how many people actually sent me a message, but I replied back to every single one of those people with a, thanks so much, I would love to have you on the show. Which of these episodes, which of these topics would you like to talk about? 
And um, I didn't get as many responses as I thought. I thought um, I thought there would be more people saying yes than there was. Um, you know, there's a lot of people on LinkedIn. There's there's probably I don't know, maybe half, um, maybe not maybe not half, maybe one third of my contacts on LinkedIn are just people who have contacted me or I have contacted them, but I really don't know. I don't know in real life. But the other half or the other two thirds are people that I do know and I've worked with, um, maybe not in the last several years, um, and maybe not in depth, like for years and years and, and on really hard projects, but but I have worked with them. I have seen them face to face. I have talked to them over the phone. We have interacted together. We have passed each other in the halls. And I thought, honestly, there would be a lot more, yeah, man, let, let's do it. Well, I ended up getting a lot of no replies from that, but I also got a lot of questions what is a podcast? What do you mean have me as a guest? What do you want me to do? How long will this take? Uh, what do you want me to talk about? Do I have to give a presentation? Is this going to be video or audio? Is it a phone call or do I meet you in person? Um, and through these conversations with these individuals, um, it became very, very clear that what was, what was clear in my mind right, be a guest on my podcast, that was not clear to these people that I'm interacting with. And I got to think, oh my gosh, even the people that I talked to uh, at the last company and the last day um, that we were all turning on our equipment, there was probably many of them that were looking at me funny because they literally had no idea what I was talking about. I had been listening to podcasts for several years. Um, I had been thinking about getting into this business or thinking about starting a podcast for you know, a year and a half, and I have done a lot of research on it, and and these folks have not, and it's it's no you know no slam against them. They just haven't haven't thought about it the way I've thought about it, and they they're not prepared to answer those kinds of questions. So they had lots and lots of questions. Even my own friends and my family, who I reached out to and said, "Hey, I would love to have you on the, as a guest on the show," they had many of the same questions. So uh, from that from that initial LinkedIn. Um, just status update, I probably got only 10 to 12 interviews scheduled uh, directly from the people who said congrats on the new position. But from many of the the texting back and forth and many of the phone calls and even some of the guests that I, that I had on the show resulting from those, uh, I learned a lot about how to really how to, how to, how to pitch the idea um, of of this is a, it's kind of like a radio show and uh, it's going to be daily. They're pre recorded. They're not live. It's audio only. It's not video, you know, and just get them all the, um, all the, all the metrics and all, all the data and all the thoughts I had about it, what the topics are, right? Motivation. We want to talk to people about a time in their life, a personal experience that they had when they were unmotivated. And then that, that, uh, kind of, turn it around moment where they, they really got fired up and, and the lessons they learned and, and on and on each day of the week. Um, and so I was explaining that over and over and over again, you know, as I was having phone calls with people, as I was typing to people, emailing to people, texting people. Um, and so I started turning all of those questions and answers, all of those uh, FAQs into some documentation. So I, I built a couple of PDFs to really explain what I was doing and why I was doing it. And it took about, gosh, I don't know, well, I can't do the math, but between February 10th, when I started socializing, uh, I launched episode number one with Nathan Johns on April 4th, 2016. So that's what, about um, the whole month of March and most of February. So that's like uh, a month and a half. So let's call it about seven weeks of work before I launched episode one. And I had about 32 episodes in the can. There's a couple of episodes that are probably unusable, maybe unusable from that, just because uh, my style as a host, I really, I, I don't think I did a, a good service to those guests. And so there's there's probably a couple of those original ones that I will may not ever use. Maybe I'll maybe I'll bring them back someday in the future. Um, but you know, there was those initial people from LinkedIn and then friends and family that I reached out to, old colleagues I reached out to, and then just started trying to uh, find other places, uh, a Twitter and and uh, 
all over social media and going to meetup groups and going to conferences and, and just asking anybody and everybody that I ran into, uh, would you do this? Yes, I was creating the FAQs, but it was it was still very, very difficult to give people an idea on what it actually sounded like and what the format was until I published. Once I published on April 4th, I published episode one. And then uh, after the about the next two weeks, after I had about 14 or 15 episodes published, then I could, you know, I could really point people to several different styles of guests and say, okay, well, I think your style really matches up with this guest that I had before. Now your content, your message is going to be different because you have different experience and the topic you're going to be talking about is going to be different. Um, but if, if he can do it, so can you, if she can do it, so can you please just come on, you know, we'll record. It's going to take 30 minutes. If you don't like it, um, if, if you don't like the way the conversation went, just let me know. Hey, Chad, just delete all this. I don't, I don't like it. And, uh, from then I started gaining traction. I started gaining momentum on this, um, on the recordings. It is still, it is still not easy. It's, I, 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 uh, talk to my wife all the time about coming up with creative ways to find new guests because that, you know, coming up daily with, I mean, weekly, every week, I got to have at least seven new guests so that next week I have seven new episodes. Um, it's, it's right now the biggest challenge that I have, but it's a fun challenge because I get to meet all kinds of, of new people all the time and, and, uh, even talk to people that I haven't talked to in a while and talk to them about things in their life, things in their career that I, I've never known. And that's, that's really, really cool. So I thought um, I thought I would kind of wrap this up by um, by kind of giving you guys a couple of different uh, bullet points or a couple of different breakdowns. Um, one was uh, the first section is going to be the places I look for the guests, and then the the next topic will be the lessons that I've learned through this hundred days of podcasting. So in case you're you've gone through this, you're, you're listening to this episode because you're like, wow, I've always wanted to start a podcast. Um, and I want to learn some information about how to do it from this guy, Chad Bostic. Cool. Awesome. I hope I can help. Or, you know, I've thought I, I'm currently, uh, producing a podcast and, uh, maybe it's just more of a monologue style and I'd like to find some guests. So here are my ways that I've, I've found guests. You know, number one, the friends, family, and colleagues. Yeah, that was so awesome. I so much appreciate all of my friends, all of my past colleagues, uh, even a few family members who have said yes. Um, because the thing is, you know, those folks, they already know me and they like me and trust me. Or at least they know, they know me and they trust me. Some of them, my family members don't like me. But anyway, the, the biggest problem was really convincing them um, that they have something to share, something very important to share um, with the audience. You know, I, I was so self-conscious back before I started this, even when I was, you know, recording the first 30 episodes, I was very, very self-conscious about the way I sounded and how are people going to take me? Are they going to like it? Are they going to not like it? Is anybody going to listen to this? So self-conscious about um, myself and I didn't understand, I didn't give enough respect to the same thoughts are in my guest's head, right? They're thinking the same thing. Now, some of them are, are, are very social, they're very, uh, very talkative, very confident people, but many others were just like me. And when I asked them, hey, want to be on my podcast? They're thinking, I don't know. Uh, I'm not smart. Uh, I don't have anything important to say. Uh, you know, I, I have excuse, excuse, excuse that their internal mind, their internal, um, I guess filters are, are putting on themselves and, and saying, you know what, this seems like new territory. We've never done this before. We've never done a podcast episode before. Uh, let's say, I don't know, or let's say not right now, or let's just give them excuses about why, why we're not good enough. I still get that from people today, and I understand, I respect it. If if you're listening and I've asked you and you've given me these reasons, I'm bummed with the mic. If, if you've given me these reasons, then I, I completely do not fault you for that. I understand it's taken me, like I said, years and years to finally 
like get the courage to just put my words out there and get comfortable with it. But now after recording a hundred episodes, I'm a lot more comfortable than I was a few months ago. It's pretty awesome. So look at those friends, family, and colleagues. Just just ask those folks. Give them give them a very clear picture of what you expect out of them, what you want from them, how long it's going to take, what the format's going to be, uh, what kind of questions you're going to ask. Like if you know, um, like in my case, I had I had my my seven different topics. I created like a short list of three or four or five common questions for each one of those um, topics and send it out to potential guests, and that helps. Uh, the next biggest one is friends of a friend or friend of a guest. So every guest that I have on the show, I ask them at the end of the episode, hey, thank you so much, so, so much for joining me. I know my my audience is going to really value um, the message that you shared with me, the stories that you provided. This is what I got out of it. It was amazing. Um, but I would, I would also like to meet people in your group, in your social network. So who in your little circle can you think of that would make an awesome guest for the show? And many guests say, I don't know, I'm going to have to get back to you. Um, But quite a few have said, you know what? This one person that I'm thinking of would be awesome for your productivity show, or they would be an amazing guest on leadership, or oh my gosh, I just met this, I uh, I heard this individual speak at a conference, and, and they are the most motivating speaker I've ever heard, you've got to have them on the show. That has been huge, 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 is reaching out to uh, friends and colleagues and contacts of my guests. Thank you, if, if I haven't already told you a hundred times, this is a hundred times. Thank you so much for all the referrals that you guys have already given me. Okay, the next is LinkedIn. So again, I talked about LinkedIn in great detail. So um, you know, other than replying back to those posts, you know, who has an awesome position at an interesting company that kind of is in that area that you're uh, that you're looking for? Who who's writing articles on LinkedIn and posting them there, or who's liking and sharing and interacting with? with articles or, or my posts, who is liking and sharing and interacting with my posts on LinkedIn, reach out to those folks, right? Uh, Twitter has been huge, especially recently. I've, I've really doubled down on Twitter and used it. Um, at first, I was using Twitter just kind of randomly, just like, again, that that friends and family or, or uh, friend of a friend kind of thing. But now I'm, I'm looking specifically at targeting companies and brands and the people that follow those companies and brands. Uh, I'm looking at user groups and tech associations and uh, and conferences and speakers and presenters that all use Twitter to interact and provide information. I'm reaching out to them and say, hey, it looks like you've got some great content to share here. Please come share it with my audience. Um, and the next is user groups. So um, I, I, I live in Central Florida and I've been going to uh, as many different user groups as I can, unfortunately. Um, not as many as I'd like to, but just getting out there and talk to people face to face and hear their stories and and hear their presentations and provide them feedback. And then, you know, reach out to the speakers as well as the other attendees and say, gosh, guys, you know, guys and gals, I would love to have you on the show. You're, you sound like you got some interesting stories here. Let's, let's take some of this conversation, just hit record and, 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 uh, do it on the podcast. The next step that I'd like to do that I'm not doing right now is going to conferences. So this has all happened so fast um, that I haven't done a lot of planning uh, and haven't been very thoughtful into, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to go to conferences either as a speaker or as a guest or, or as a, a sponsor and, uh, and get involved with hundreds or thousands of people at a time at a conference. I've never done any conference speaking before, um, but that's the next thing that I will be tackling. I'm I'm looking at the calendar right now. I'm searching for uh, searching for conferences, both local and national, and I want to start taking some of this information, um, this this stuff that I've learned, taking it on the road and and getting up on stage and and presenting it to uh, a different audience, an audience that maybe does not know anything about podcasts or is not subscribed to my podcast and sharing with them the lessons that I've learned here on the show as well as throughout my career. By the way, if, you, if you're if you running conferences or if you know of any that um, that I might be a great guest speaker at, let me know. Um, 
hit me an e- send me an email chat at hellotechpros.com or reply back to this episode. Uh, I would love to know what conferences you guys are going to this year or what conferences you've been to um, in the past that uh, that maybe I could get in touch with uh, the organizers. I would, I would love to love to check it out. Um, the, the next one, the final one that I have places to look for great guests are other podcasts. So other podcast hosts make awesome guests because they feel your pain. They, they know, they know all the problems about trying to find guests. They know all the problems that you have with, uh, trying to get a, you know, every, everybody scheduled on the calendar and all the technical problems that, and challenges that you can, uh, get stuck with either doing the recording or doing like a Skype interview and all that kind of stuff. Um, podcast hosts are awesome guests on the show. I've had many of them on the show and, uh, and I would love to have some more. Um, and, and I'm going to have some more, so stay tuned for that. There's going to be some awesome, uh, podcast uh, hosts coming on to this show. And then their guests also reach out to the podcast guests, uh, of other shows. Um, you know, any episodes that you listen to and you think, man, that was a really awesome guest. I would love to have them on my show. If you want to have some of my guests uh, come onto your show, you know, every single episode that I have on Hello Tech Pros, there's a show notes page with links on how to connect to the guests. And uh, any one of them, I can absolutely recommend to uh, to talk again on your show, depending on, you know, the format of this show and, and what it's all about, what the topics are. If you have any questions or if you, if you want an introduction to... Uh, someone that I've had as a guest on the show, please reach out to me again, and I would love to make that introduction or love to reach out to those individuals and say, hey, uh, you know, so-and-so from this podcast is just starting up. Um, they 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 need some help, and you helped me out tremendously when, when I got Hello Tech Pros started in the first 100 episodes. Um, let's together help this person out and get it going. Cool. So that's uh, that's a whole bunch of different ways to look for guests. If you're going to start a podcast, um, I, I highly recommend any of those. I'm always looking for new ways to meet guests. So if you would like to be a guest on the show, um, here's an easy way to do it. Go to hellotechpros.com slash guests. Uh, and that's actually singular or plural. So hellotechpros.com slash guest. And um, that will have all the information that I've put together over the last several months about you know, what kind of guests do I have on the show? What's the format? You know, how, how do we conduct the recordings? Uh, what are some example questions for each episode? Um, who specifically has been a guest in the past? All these types of questions that I've gotten over and over and over again, they can all be answered right there for you on hellotechpros.com slash guest. And then on that page, I have a schedule button. You click that and you go to my calendar, which is completely open. You can take a look at my calendar and see when are the times and slots available that work for you and your calendar. And you just pick a slot and you say, okay, um, three weeks from today on a Tuesday uh, at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern time, perfect. And you select that. And if it's available on my calendar, you can book it. And then, uh, and then we're all set. There's a little form you fill out with like your bio and, and any links to social media that you want to promote and all that kind of stuff. And that's how you be a guest on this show. It's very, very easy. Okay, so before we wrap it up, I want to share some lessons that I learned and lessons that were reinforced. Now, I, I thought about giving you my, my preconceptions and misconceptions and stuff, but what I thought I would do is is take all of these lessons and I can directly relate them to the message that one of my guests is presenting and talking about on several of these episodes. So I've got I've got uh, I don't know eight or ten of these episodes that I want to call out and spe- specifically um, the lesson that I learned from it or the lesson that was reinforced with it that if I had known it way back in like February of this year or before that. Um, it would have made this podcast journey to get to 100 episodes a lot, lot easier. So the first one, um, the first lesson is, are you going to die with your songs inside? Are you going to die with your message inside? Are you going to die with your passion inside? If you go to episode 50, hellotechpros.com slash five zero, um, that was my interview with John Chisholm. And, um, you know, John talks about kind of um, 
whether or not you want to start a new business, whether or not you want to take a new career path, whether or not you want to jump into something that you're uncomfortable with, that you're not familiar with, but you have a deep passion about. And and his question to you, the audience, and to me, the host, is, are, are you going to sit there? And, and question the question he had to himself is, are you going to die with your songs inside? Like, are you going to die with this dream unfulfilled? Are you going to do it? So um, that was episode 50. Um, if I had listened to that episode, if somebody else had recorded that episode with John Chisholm and I listened to that a year ago, you know what? It would have probably spurred me on a lot faster to, to make it happen. The next one is when life pushes you before you're ready. So episode 57 with Derek Sire. Episode 57, when life pushes you before you're ready, Derek talked about how he was in a position where he got laid off from his job and he had kind of been planning things and, and getting a business spun up on the side, but he had a three to six month timeline on when that was going to happen. And then he got pushed, right? Life pushed him in the back and said, dude, you got to sink or swim. You, if you're going to do this, you better do it live, buddy. You get better do it now because... Uh, your your safety net, your job, your nine to five job that you have is gone. So you, you got to do it. Well, Derek, I was in the exact same position you were in, in February of 2016 when I got pushed. I actually got pushed three times in the last 12 months. Maybe I should have, maybe I should have listened to his episode about a year and a half ago. So when the first time I got pushed, I would have, I would have jumped in and started swimming in, in the podcast space instead of waiting another year before getting started. The next lesson I learned is to have guts, and you only have to be gutsy five seconds at a time. So Mike Crandall, I talked to Mike on episode 75, so you go to hellotechpros.com slash 75. Um, you know, Mike coaches uh, CEOs and salespeople, and uh, we, we had a very great conversation about, you know, sometimes we're in a position where we want to do something but we're nervous about it, we're scared about it, we're not sure if it's the right direction or not, and sometimes you just gotta have guts. You gotta have guts and you gotta take action. And usually, a lot of times, that gutsiness, you only it's only required five seconds at a time. So think of any question you wanna ask anybody, any statement that you wanna make, anything, um, not necessarily controversial, but anything uh, that you're insecure about or unsure about, just take five seconds and just boom, do it. Just do it. One, two, three, four, five, done. And then it's out there. It's in the universe. And then you get feedback. And maybe it's right. Maybe it's wrong. I don't know. But be gutsy five seconds at a time. Uh, the next one, um, the next lesson I learned to hack your goals into habits. Now, Joe Zach is another podcaster. He he is one of the co-hosts of the uh, Coding Blocks podcast and um he, he's an awesome dude and we talked to to him about um really how you hack your goals into habits so if you have a goal like losing weight or getting into shape um you know maybe you can take one of your habits that you already have and kind of hack it and, and turn it into something more positive right so every day at three o'clock i get up and go in the kitchen and get a snack well maybe every day at three o'clock i just go, you know, take a pet for a walk or, or go ride a bike around the block. And that will get my, uh, you know, get my blood pumping, get my, get me out of my chair and, and away from my desk, what I need to do to take a break. But it also allows me to hack that goal and turn that into a habit. So every day, if I'm doing this every day at three o'clock, then before long, I don't have to set a timer or reminder to do it. It's just happening. So for me on the podcast, you know, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do a seven day a week podcast, because I wanted to turn podcasting into a habit where I'm doing it so often that I'm really accel accelerating my growth and accelerating my experience as a podcast host by doing so many episodes at one time. Okay, the next one is uh, the next lesson that I learned was from Stacy Eads. Uh, she was on episode 51. And man, she's a rock star. She gets so much done. Her and her team at Levant Technologies increased their output by 600%. Six times their business. Got six times the amount of business done 
in the last couple of years by removing distractions and specifically about turning off emails, turning off social media, turning off uh, instant messenger, all the other things that can ding and ping and, and distract you throughout the day. Just shut those off except for three times a day. When you first get to the office at lunchtime or right after lunchtime and right before you check out of the office. And those are the only three times a day that you check on these messages, right? Emails or, or instant messages or whatever. And you can get so much more work done. So when I take this advice from, from Stacy and I implemented this into my work and started shutting things down and, and stop, for me, it's stop looking at stats, like on my, on my Libsyn account, stop looking at stats all day and stop looking at social media. Just get off of that, say what I gotta say in the morning, get off of it and go produce, go edit, go publish, go create blog posts, go do something, be productive. Don't just sit there and surf the internet and, uh, and wait for emails to pop up. Next one, you're a rock star. You just gotta find it. You gotta find your inner rock star. My discussion with Nicole Holland on episode 69. Nicole is another podcaster uh, and, and just has an amazing show on the uh, Building Business Rockstars podcast. And in that episode, we talked about, you know, it's, it's a lot of mindset stuff, a lot of self-confidence, a lot of how to get it done, when you're not feeling it on the inside. And all of her guests are entrepreneurs who have taken that step into rock stardom um, by really just putting their dreams and hopes and out there and uh, being self-confident enough to take a risk. The next one, uh, your voice is unique. That was episode 78 with Jason Freeman. Jason uh, has a very, very unique voice. Um, he has uh, cerebral palsy. Um, has had that since he was just a baby <clears throat> and it's given him a very unique voice and you know he he's been very uh, self-conscious about that voice and has allowed that to limit his uh, limit his life and limit his career for a long time until he realized that you know maybe this unique voice that he has that he's been very self-conscious about and has hated all of his life, maybe that's the one thing that makes him an expert on communication. Because when he talks, I'm telling you, you will listen. Go listen to episode 78 with Jason Freeman. He's such an inspirational, motivating speaker. Amazing, amazing man to talk to. And your voice is unique too. So if you want to get into podcasting, it doesn't matter what you sound like. You just have to get over the fact of this is what you sound like on the air. This is what you sound like in front of a microphone. This is what you sound like on the telephone. Just just put it out there. This, this is the way everybody in the world hears you. Now you're hearing it instead of from, from your lips, right? You're hearing it through a speaker. And it's going to sound different. Get over it. <laughs> get over yourself. Quit thinking about that. Quit putting yourself down. Or don't listen. Don't listen to yourself. Just record it, get it done, and then send it to somebody else to edit and, and publish. And then never listen to your own episodes. Let your audience listen to it. Your voice is fine. Uh, episode six with Steven Taylor. Steven's a good friend of mine. And, and we talk about Invest Inspired, um, both in your work and in your play and in your family. Whatever you're doing, find things that inspire you. Find things that motivate you. Find different things that will help you grow new neural pathways in your brain. Anything that you do that's new or with new people or a slightly different slant on an, on an old idea or old process, excuse me, anything that you do that's brand new um, will be experiential. It will be uh, many, many more times valuable. So every time I talk to a new guest, even though I'm talking about the same thing, every Monday I'm talking about motivation, but every Monday is awesome because I'm talking to a new guest that is inspiring me um, in a, in a new, different way. So that episode's awesome. Episode six, episode 70 with Veronica Kieran. Uh, Veronica is an, is a podcaster and a, uh, a, a website designer. <laughs> and she gave me some great feedback about my Sunday unplugged episodes. Uh, <laughs> I kind of admitted on that episode, you know what? Sometimes I feel like a complete failure because I have this entire episode dedicated to, work-life balance and being unplugged and not stressing so much about work, but yet I'm like constantly working. Like as an entrepreneur, I'm constantly working on the podcast, on the blogs, on the social media, on the editing, 
on the next thing, the next step, and I'm not taking my own advice, I'm not taking my guest advice and unplugging. And she's like, dude, you have to draw a line between work and life. You have to set boundaries and don't, like, especially since since you're working at home, like I'm working at my home office right now and I can hear my family in the other room talking and playing and having a good time. I need to set boundaries on when I'm in this office, when I'm getting things done, when I'm being productive, and then when I'm off. And in just a few minutes, about an hour from now, I'm going to have to take off and the rest of the day, I'm going to take my daughter to ice skating lessons and we're going to have a lovely evening tonight, having dinner as a family and, and there'll be no more, no more podcast stuff because everything that I needed to get to d- done today is done. And the last, <clears throat> whoop, I'm getting all choked up. The last lesson that I wanted to share <clears throat> after I take a drink, hang on. Oh, goodness. The last lesson that I want to share with you today um, was uh, was episode one with Nathan Johns. Nathan is a very dear friend of mine. We've known each other since middle school for a long time. And, and we've had, uh, you know, um, periods in our life when we're when we're far apart, thousands of miles away and, and don't talk for years. <laughs> and we've had uh, periods where we're hanging out all the time. And it's always fun to talk to Nathan. He's been on the show several times. But on episode one, so after I after I had 30 episodes recorded, I specifically picked Nathan's um, episode as episode number one because it was just so impactful. It was so powerful to me. Um, Nathan talks about dealing with depression and un- unmotivating projects. And what I got out of that story is, you know, sometimes life sucks. Sometimes work sucks. Sometimes everything outside of your control is just crappy, just painful. You know, life can life can be brutal and hard and, and miserable sometimes. But Hang on, I think I'm going to use a Lord of the Rings quote. As Gandalf said, as my boy Gandalf said, that's not for us to decide. All we have to do is decide what to do with the time that is given to us. So um, I'm, I'm kind of taking Nathan's Nathan's episode, turning it into a Lord of the Rings scene. But uh, what Nathan was saying is basically, you know, you, you have to be proactive about things. You have to get counseling if you need counseling. You have to, you know, have a discussion with your, your with your spouse or the people you live with or your boss or your employees or whomever about the things that you're going through and what changes you want to make. And you need to be very, very proactive about making some changes and saying, hey, this is my life and things suck right now. Um, and these are things that are outside my control. Right? The health of my family members are outside of my control, and there's nothing I can do about that. But the types of projects that I'm working on at work is absolutely in my control. If I'm not inspired by that work, and you, my manager, are not figuring out how to inspire me and lead me in a way that gets me fired up and wants me to come in here and uh, and do all this stuff and get it done, by golly, there's a whole bunch of other positions out there that you're well qualified for. So take responsibility for your own career, take responsibility for your own life, be proactive and do it. Make a change. If you need a change in your life, make a change, take action. And that's basically what all of this is about. A hundred episodes for me, for Chad, is all about if you want something to happen, if you want to create a hundred podcast episodes, if you want to create a hundred vlogs, if you want to write a book, if you want to uh, build some software and publish it on, I don't know, on mobile devices. If if you want to get uh, your master's degree, whatever you want to do that you've been putting off, you have to take massive, massive action. You have to really dedicate to it and not just put a goal together and say, I, would, I have this goal. I would like to achieve this. No, that's great. That's a great starting point. But then you have to take a massive amount of action to get it done. That's it. I would love feedback please visit me at hellotechpros.com slash 100, uh, episode 100, and leave me some feedback here. If you want to be a guest on this show, I would love to have you, uh, or at least love to have a scoping call to talk about it. Um, you can find that uh, that sign-up page at hellotechpros.com slash guests. And... Um, I'm looking forward to talking to you. Thank you so much. I hope this is valuable. Leave me some feedback and let me know 
what you would like to see in the next 100 episodes of Hello Tech Pros. Thanks. Take care. The show notes page for this episode can be found at hellotechpros.com slash 100. This episode of Hello Tech Pros is sponsored by Burdine. Siri and OK Google are fun for party tricks, but 97% of smartphone users don't like talking to their phones in public. It's kind of weird. When was the last time you were at the mall and heard someone say, Siri, what's my wife's dress size? Or, OK Google, where did I park my car? Some things are better left unspoken. Berdeen remembers the things you care about and reminds you discreetly through text messages. Names, dates, places, ideas, to-do lists, Berdeen never forgets and is always there to remind you. You don't need to install an app, just text Berdeen a statement and she'll remember. Text her a question and she'll answer. Berdeen is the only contact you have to have on your phone. Meet Berdeen at berdeen.com. That's B-U-R-D-E-N-E dot com. Or text Berdeen to 480-418-1411. Outside the U.S., be sure to use the country code PLUS1. So for non-U.S. residents, text PLUS1-480-418-1411. With a message, Berdine. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review, subscribe to this channel, and check back tomorrow. This has been Productivity Tuesday, but tomorrow my featured guest and I are talking about leadership. Thursday, technology. Friday, people in communication. Saturday, entrepreneurship. Sunday, being unplugged, Monday, motivation, and then we do it all over again next Tuesday for productivity, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.